This is a uh, early Continental Y69 motor I picked up recently. We're going to be rebuilding. You can see the various components that came with it. And, uh, it was already disassembled when I purchased it. Um, you can see the magneto on the other side of the governor. The valve covers have already been removed. You can see that the lower bell housing, um, this was a stationary power unit that ran a belt pulley. Um, you can see that it's in fairly good condition still. A lot of parts have been removed from it, as well as has the original shroud, the international harvester, it's the radiator there. One of the major issues with this is the bell housing was dropped at some point and cracked. Um, it's split in half and then there's another crack in it, so that'll be quite a job to figure out how to have that repaired. Uh, the head's already been removed at this point. Um, inspecting it, I don't see any major damage to it. And you can see some scale in the water jacket. Looking at the gasket, I don't see any particular areas that have failed. A lot of times it can tell you about why the motor was in the condition it was in. However, it doesn't look like anything really blew past or, or major failures. Looking at the valve seats, you can see the exhaust valve versus the intake. Um, the exhaust valves are fairly burnt. Um, the intake shapes, the seats actually look pretty good still. Uh, no major scoring or anything on the cylinder walls as well. We'll be removing this here. It's just these two bolts to remove. After removing the bolts, you can see this in the water jacket, the amount of scale that's built up in there. Also, because of this design, this larger, longer bolt actually goes through and enters the water jacket. You can see where it started to, to rust away there. So that'll be something we'll be replacing. We'll want to descale the water jacket as well. Let's see if I put this back in here. You can see where it's actually visible through. You can see where you'd have all of the coolant passing right over it there. Next, we're going to be removing the magneto and the governor. We'll pull the two bolts on the governor's side, and then pull the uh, two bolt or the single bolt on the magneto side. Pulling the governor out, you can see what kind of condition it's in. It still, actually has gear oil on it as well, which is a good sign. And you can see that would be the internal side of the magneto. All right. Next, we're going to be removing this front cradle. Um, it's uh, four bolts. As you can see, you can actually turn the motor over by hand, which is a very good sign. There doesn't seem to be any issues there. Inspecting the cylinder walls, there's no major grooves. There's no indication that there's created a, a ridge that needs to be reamed. And next, we'll be looking at the valve seats. I removed the head bolt screws and now can inspect the valve seats. You can see this is an intake versus exhaust. The exhaust valve seat looks pretty burnt. However, it can be pretty deceiving. We'll try cleaning it up a little bit. As we inspect a little bit more, see a lot of that scale just came right off. Using a little degreaser and just a very light nylon brush, you can go from a burnt looking valve seat to actually a very clean valve seat. All right, this last valve seat is going to be a bit of an issue. Um, it's fairly burnt, and as a result, we're going to have to have it either cut again or actually uh, completely removed and a replacement valve seat put in. And that'll be a good point for us to stop. Um, it's not uncommon to find issues like this, especially in older motors, um, but there are a few options for addressing it, and hopefully we can uh, keep on budget. Alright, thank you for watching and until next time, be tractoring.